Hello and welcome to what could be a very short video. I've finished the first book, as you guys know, um, of Fazbear Frights, and basically, um, you'll see this is the last page, I don't want to spoil it obviously, but that's the last page of the last story in there, which I've forgotten, Count the Ways. Um, then it goes to about the authors, I don't know if you can see that, probably not. It says about the authors, and it tells you about Scott Cawthon and Ellie Cooper. Um, and then, there's an additional story. Uh, and I've highlighted all of it. There are a lot of highlights, because this one probably has the most lore out of all of them, even though it's the shortest. Um, but, it's really strange. This story connects the other three, almost. Um, I'm probably going to miss out details, because I've only read it once, and I highlighted it very swiftly, because I was so excited to read it, but I think I've got everything. Anyway, this is... it's not really about anyone, um, but the main kind of character is Detective Larson. Um, Detective Larson is in the divisional office, um, he works there. Um, and he has like a very smelly desk and stuff. Uh, I think he's working overnight or something, but he isn't in a rush to get back to his empty apartment because his wife, Angela, left him because um, their seven-year-old, Ryan, uh, wasn't really looked after properly by, by Larson. And the reason for that is because of um, reports. He always had to catch up on his reports um, and he, had, he never spent time with Ryan. Uh, I have a few quotes. I'll be home in time to throw the ball, Ryan, turned into, sorry, I got a new case. I'll take you camping this week, weekend, uh, turned into, sorry, the chief called me in. Th it's, this part really isn't relevant. Um, at least I don't think so. So I'm going to skip kind of most of it um, until we get to the part where the chief comes in. Chief Monaghan. Or Monohan, Monahan. <laughs> I sound like I'm talking in alien right now. He comes up and he's like, What is that stench from this desk? But then he hands out an, an envelope to Larson and he's like, Oh, I don't think this is good. I, I really don't think this is going to be good. Uh, I'm probably fired or something. Um, but then the chief says, It's about the stitch wraith. No one else wants to take this case. And then Larson says, I don't want it. And then the chief says, tough. <laughs> you have this case, basically. So Larson is in charge of taking this case. Um, he hasn't opened the envelope yet. Um, because he doesn't. he's kind of like rejecting it, in a way. In a way, he's rejecting it because he believes that the Stitch Wraith um, is an urban legend. Um, and the chief says that, haven't you heard the latest? And then, um, basically, in, apparently in the public news, a local teen, Sarah, disappeared a week before, and the detectives assigned to the case, not Larson, who gave thanks for small favours, had several dozen eyewitnesses who claimed the girl turned into garbage right before their eyes. Now that should be a familiar story to you. Um, it was the story in To Be Beautiful. Um, so there you go, there's a little connection there you can already see. The Stitch Wraith is described as a, a strange cloaked figure roaming the streets. Um, it's a shrouded figure in some sort of cloak, cape or hooded coat. It had a lurching walk a complete disinterest in others unless bothered, and an obsession with dumpsters and trash bins. It was usually seen dragging garbage bags full of no one knew what. He'd heard all this before. He and most of his fellow detectives had dismissed it as bunk. There was another case with the five withered bodies. That's... I don't know where they got them from, but that was a strange detail to add there. Um, probably from the first story. Um, and another strange detail, eyes that bled black down the sides of the face. Um, and if you look on the, on the front cover of the book, um, the Spring Bonnie in the pit has black, like, goo 
coming out of its eyes. It's it's very strange detailing. Um, and apparently these two men died from him after trying to attack him, after trying to mug him. There were photos of him um, reaching into dumpsters and pulling out mannequin torsos. Um, and basically they got good pictures of the stitch wraith um, from under the hood of what looked like maybe a long trench coat a bulky white face appeared out at the, at the night. Larson stiffened so he wouldn't recoil. The face wasn't a face, not a human face anyway, unless it was a damaged human face covered in bandages maybe? More like a mask. The face was rammed and its features were drawn onto the curved white surface, done in thick black marker. The black features looked like a child had made them. It had dark eyes, one of which looked blackened, and it had a terrifying mouth with a missing tooth and something stuck between the remaining front teeth. Were those blood stains around the mouth? Um, and then they say they have a match on it and they know where it's from. But that's where the story ends. Um, and this might continue in other books. There might be even more shorter short stories in the other books. Who I think this is? Ennard, 100%. Even Matt Pat said that. I know that for a fact. Um, it is Ennard. Um, when he gets back out of Michael, I guess. Um, he's interacting with all these people. Um, and he might be the main cause for all of these stories. What do you think, though? That was The Stitch Wraith. Um, and hopefully I will be reading Fetch to you. Um, not reading it to you. Like, presenting it, analysing it. Um in the next video. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.